Thanks for joining us today. My name is Nicholas Drosmatos with AWS. I'm a Partner Solutions Architect, and uh, joining me today we have Jim Garrett from Red Hat. Yep. Hey, I'm Jim Garrett. Uh, I am a Chief Architect at Red Hat, handling all of the AWS Alliance's tasks. Great. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about uh, OpenShift Advanced Cluster Security today, or also known as ACS. Uh, Jim, can you give me a high-level overview of what ACS is, kind of the benefits yeah. of it? Yep, absolutely. So ACS, as its name implies, Advanced Cluster Security, allows you to apply principles or to apply security checks to any of the different types of containers that you may be deploying into your container platform. So you can see from this diagram, for example, that ACS can be used to manage OpenShift either on-premise or in the cloud on AWS or even manage a ROSA environment. And basically what you, what you want to think about when you're talking about containers, Nick, is there may be thousands of different container types that exist today. Right. For example, I know that uh, AWS has their container registry. Yep, ECR. Which, ECR, which people can check containers into. And, and it's great. It's an open source model that says anybody that checks something in, somebody else can utilize and can leverage. Right. But the question then becomes, how do you know if that container is secure? Is it safe? Um, and maybe even if it is secure and safe, how do you know that maybe the components inside that container aren't old or maybe have vulnerabilities built into them? You know, for example, when you think about your containers, you may have uh, a container that has some type of, maybe it's a, a Tomcat web server that's deployed inside of that container. Okay. Maybe it's an old version. Maybe it's version 9.x, where right. you know, the most recent one is, I don't know what, 11.x. Okay. Um, but, but what if there's a, a known vulnerability with that version of Tomcat? Well, ACS can be used to introspect into that container. It can analyze, for example, the internal operating system. It can analyze the packages and the libraries that are there. It can automatically analyze if any of those packages or libraries have known vulnerabilities. And it can do the same thing for the, for the things that are in the containers, such as your, your web servers or your application servers. And when you take ACS and you build it possibly into a CI-CD pipeline, you create something that allows you to check these different functional things that could be wrong with your container. Okay. Um, you know, for example, maybe you start off with a container, you're, you're doing development, and you, maybe you have, uh, you have a build step that's inside of, of that, that, that CI-CD pipeline. The build step is going to take the code out of your source code control mechanism like a GitHub repository. It's going to pull that code down. It's going to do the compilation. It's going to do the creation of your artifacts. Okay. Okay. Uh, for example, maybe that artifact would be stored in something like a Nexus repository. Uh, Nexus is where you're going to physically store um, anything that's created during that build step. Um, and then where ACS could come into play is you could have a step in your ACS, or I should say in your CICD pipeline, that can analyze what was created in that build repository. So essentially doing introspection of the actual... Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And since this is part of a CICD pipeline, once it introspects into that pipeline, um, it, can, it can then decide where it wants to go from there. If, if it finds a problem with that pipeline, maybe it kicks back to the beginning to say there's an error. We don't want to go any farther forward. Um, however, if, if it approves it, then you know, whatever is next in your pipeline, whether you're deploying to a staging environment or maybe even to a production environment. Right. Okay. But the key thing is, is ACS becomes the, um, the, the control cop. Okay. Um, if that container is good, it lets it pass. If it's not good, it's going to reject it back. Now, there are rules that you can create in ACS also. For example, maybe, maybe you're early in your development cycle and you just simply want to get your application into your test environment. Okay. Okay. You can, you can set up rules that say, okay, you know, I've recognized that there's a problem with your container, but I'm just going to let it pass. I'm going to let it go through. Uh, you, can, you can then let it go through maybe to your testers, let them do their job while you go back and you fix whatever is wrong in that container. So what I'm gathering from a lot of this is, you know, like developers 
can either build their own individual images or, or source code and then build an image from that source code. Some developers will go out and just pull things from, you know, open source repos, right? Like uh, Docker Hub or even just go on Git and pull things down. And they're not really doing introspection to make sure that there's no critical vulnerabilities or CVEs in exactly. there. So then they go into de de deploy these into the environments and operations doesn't always catch these things, right? Until Sometimes it's until it's too late. So ACS can really actually help with a lot of uh, the validation of these images before they actually make their way through, you know, uh, development to pre-prod and test and then production environments. Mm -hmm. um, what, what are some of the other benefits that ACS can can offer as far as, you know, um, like can ACS plug into like other Kubernetes distributions or only in OpenShift? It can. And that's, and that's beautiful. That's a great question because with ACS, you can plug into any Kubernetes environment. So if you have, for example, if you're using EKS with AWS, uh, you can use ACS to introspect into the containers that you're deploying into EKS, just like you see in this pipeline. Right. Right. The pipeline is agnostic. It doesn't really care what you're dealing with. You know, it, maybe at the final stage, this could be, um, you know, it could be EKS or it could be uh, OpenShift or it could be some other type of Kubernetes uh, engine that you have deployed. Yeah, which is great because I mean, you know, at, at AWS we have a lot of customers that are using a combination of different Kubernetes type of environments, right? Um, it could yeah. be different business units have different needs. So one might be using EKS, one might be using Rosa, might, one might be using bring your own subscription of OpenShift or even OpenShift dedicated. Yeah, right? exactly. Wow, exactly. That, that's 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 fantastic. Um, so how is ACS actually deployed? Uh, is there, you know, what's the methodology that goes into deploying yeah, ECS? Yeah, so, so once you have OpenShift installed, you know, that's the key thing. OpenShift okay. has to first be installed. And then ACS becomes an operator inside of OpenShift. Okay. So um, uh, it's just one of the operators that comes out of the box with OpenShift. You can install that operator. And, and the process of installing the operator is actually going to physically install new containers that are running inside of OpenShift. Okay. And those containers, they physically are the ACS application. So, um, you know, once you've installed that operator, then you, you can then start looking at, for example, these build steps where you're now calling out to ACS. So the build step is, is leveraging an API, calling out to ACS, and coming back with information. Um, and, and it's in that ACS module where you're going to see the reports that are run that tell you the vulnerabilities. For example, I, I've seen it come up where it says uh, maybe you're using a, an old version of Tomcat mm -hmm. and it says there's a known vulnerability with this where people can exploit and gain access to your environment. Uh, you need to upgrade to version x.x. So it makes recommendations to you it also. It makes recommendations and it also you talked about CVEs with the yep. common vulnerabilities. Uh, it can it can identify CVEs and it will create a report, a list of all the things that are wrong with that container. Yep. And it tells you to go fix those things wow. before you go into production. So again, when you put that into perspective with all the thousands of containers that come free from the open source environment, right. you don't know if they're safe and secure. This will get you to a point where you're safe and secure. Yeah, no, that's that's extremely powerful. Um, so if a customer is looking at, you know, consuming ACS, is is that prepackaged with OpenShift or is that kind of an, an add-on or how, how would they actually yeah. consume ACS? That's a great question because nothing's free, right? right. Uh, so yeah, you have to you have to purchase the ACS operator uh, from from Red Hat, uh, and and once you have that ACS uh, subscription, you can then deploy it inside of OpenShift and you can leverage it to do the things we described. Well, wow. I mean, it sounds f absolutely fantastic. I mean, I can see a lot of value in this, especially when you're talking about you know managing not just hundreds but thousands or tens of thousands of containers. Um, so you know, large scale enterprises, or even if you're working in highly regulated environments, you know, where it's like financial institutions and such, where you know they're very, very, very tight when it comes to security and compliancy. Mm -hmm. um, but I think everyone really could benefit from solutions like ACS. Absolutely, and and you you talk about compliance, you yeah. talk about maybe government agencies. I mean, we can handle all of the different requirements that you have, whether it's HIPAA, whether it's, you know, uh, you, you name it. There's there's a whole list of different things that we support. Uh, but, but with that, you can create these containers that out of the box are compliant with what you want them to be able to do. Well, I mean, that sounds fantastic. I appreciate you coming in today and thank yeah. you for joining and uh, looking forward to talking a little bit more about some of the other Red Hat solutions in the future. Sounds good. Thanks, Nick. Thanks.